And by the way, let me also tell you that, you know, he has got 800, you know, the full marks in domain three, which is the highest across the globe. So 800 out of 800 in domain three. Hello, everyone. This is Aditya from CISA This Much. And today we are we have with us Mr. Somnath Shanoi, who has recently cleared his CISA exam with a huge 608 overall score. So first of all, Somnath, heartiest congratulations from our side for this huge marks. Yes, because, you know, let me uh, say this, that, you know, anyone who scored above 600, you know, in CISA, uh, it is not an easy score to achieve. And it, it requires lots of efforts and lots of hard work. So this is a huge achievement. And by the way, let me also tell you that, you know, he has got 800, you know, the full marks in domain three, which is the highest across the globe. So 800 out of 800 in domain three. So again, you know, uh, okay. So before, you know, we will be asking him lot, lots of questions about his, you know, study plans and, you know, his strategies, how, how much time he took and everything. But before that, I'll ask uh, Sumna Shanai to please introduce yourself to our audience. Thank you. Thank you, Aditya. Thank you for having me on the call. So, uh, Aditya, like, uh, well, to, to begin with, uh, I wanted to somehow uh, get this through. I want to qualify myself as a CISA auditor from a long time. And um, I really uh, tried to attempt it, or I would, I would say try to uh, begin it quite a few years ago. But uh, at that time, there was no proper coaching or guidance available. Okay. So, uh, honestly, I think the last year in uh, 2000, uh, I think 2000, not last year, I think two, two years back, uh, I had gone through your videos in, in the in the YouTube. Okay, and, but but somehow I didn't try to get it. But later on, what I did was I um, I joined some course, okay, which was taken by one a very renowned person who is a CISA trainer, and that, that went well, I would say. And also uh, got to prescribe one Udemy course by one of the well-renowned uh, uh, teachers. And that also went well. But uh, somehow I felt that uh, I should study more or I should revise more. So uh, that is where I remembered the uh, the video recordings which you had put in YouTube two years back. I went and searched it, which I watched. And I, I came to know that there are some, some more detailed or the uh, detailed explanation as in the the... There were lots of videos. Like if I, if you go to domain two, I think it was of it was of two parts. Domain two, and it was more than six hours, so that was huge. And I also went through uh, your uh, what you say the the notes which you had given for domain two, and I felt that yeah, this is what something I want. So I would say that uh, uh, the reason why I took this is exam. This is one of the world's uh, top. Uh, I would say certification, which is available across the globe only for for the auditing. Okay, honestly, I am ISO 9001 or 27001 or 14000 or 45001 certified. So uh, that as an internal auditor, but I I was like after doing ISO 27001, I thought that yeah, this is this is what actually an auditor should know. He he should focus more of the information security, right? That's that's a need of our right. And, uh, and as you say, as you see that after this um, this pandemic or after this global war which you are seeing, most of the problem have uh, like like uh, the war is led in the front, but behind we are seeing lots of uh, hacking activities and everything going on, right? So so it, as an auditor, I feel that you should have a sound knowledge about the information security, so that. Uh, uh, as as an audit, like as an organization, how can you protect your organization from uh, from the uh, attacks or what strategy you should use? That should be uh, kept in mind. And as well as I would say, as an uh, internal auditor, or I would say when, when when the customers or the clients try to audit our company, we need to defend our company, saying that yeah, this is the benchmark and the industry standard that that we have and that we are following. So uh, for that, I, I'm sure we need to have a uh, a good good knowledge about the audit and CISA is the best course. Yeah, yeah. So th that's what that's what uh, 
I thought like it's high time I I shouldn't delay this uh, um, getting this uh, uh, CISA certification, and I thought of uh, writing in in two thousand twenty two itself. So uh, you have also got a recent hike of forty five percent, which you were saying, you know, after clearing the CISA, <laughs> you got a new job. and a new yeah. hike and new opportunity so yeah so again you know this is a very common question nowadays because you know if you look into the market there are so many certifications you know uh, for infosec for audit there is only one certification which is cisa but you know still mm-hmm. there are lots of it certifications so you know people ask that you know uh, should i do cisa or like will i get value out of cisa uh, will it add any value to my cv you know so what's your experience so you have already got a, a good job with a huge package because of this but then you know what answer you would like to, or, or, or how you will guide these people uh, you know who who ask uh, these these kind of questions my my advice would be uh, like don't do the course or don't do certification just for getting high car getting a job uh, try to do it uh, like as a student right so how i approach this i approach as a as a student and i wanted to learn each and every aspect okay so once you get this certification like it's a industry standard not, not just uh, the, uh, this is a certification aditya i also had done uh, several other certification which is close to the uh, domain 3 of cisa like uh, scrum like professional scrum master professional uh, scrum product owner okay so some of those uh, these concepts are used in domain 3 okay so uh, as i said like n- not only these certifications along with that i have uh, experience in the um, auditing as well and I, ha- i have done this iso certifications so this this cisa certification also helped me to grow up, up the ladder in the career uh, and uh, yes this this certification is highly valued across the globe so uh, what i feel is that uh, there is a level of trust which you build uh, in the recruiters once you get this so this is this demonstrates if you clear this certification it demonstrates your competency like it's not a, a theoretical exam where you just try to uh, memorize few concepts and try to go there and write the exam no uh, these exams are uh, scenario based they give you uh, like live scenarios what happens in the world and you need to choose the best answer it's close to it's close to the auditing what i have done as well as the auditing which i have is like when the external customers like uh, like fortune finder customers they come and audit our company at, at that time they are they come with bunch of uh, questionnaires right so th- the exam questionnaires are quite similar to that so so it it helped me a lot in convincing the customers or i would say after doing this is it helped me a lot in uh, uh, updating the process or defining the process or trying to uh what do you say tweak the process or convince the customers in uh, in such a way that yeah we we do have stuff and uh, yeah we, we can we can do it we can do things okay yeah so uh my next question is that uh, you know even you were doing full time job and with your full time job you used to you know uh, manage your even other studies so how much time did it take for you to you know finish the certification and what used to be your routine the the daily i can say if i can say if i if i can ask your daily time table like how many hours you used to study every day uh, on weekdays and weekends because see nowadays uh, this question has become more relevant because i have seen people you know they they feel that if they only study on sundays or on weekends they'll able to pass this exam within just one or two months of studying uh hmm. people also feel that you know if they just sit for the live live lectures or you know they just just they just sit for the weekends and within one and a half two months they'll go and write the exam and they 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 then they will clear the exam they feel hmm. is this i mean i mean people have this perspective that this exam is that easy to you know clear by having the uh, the minimum efforts from their side and people who are uh, working in big four you know especially these people they don't even get time to you know study so what advice you will give to uh, you know these people see uh, first of all um, that that depends like as uh, there are several companies who compel or who mandate uh, not compel mandate the employees to have the certification so what is your motivation that's that's the uh, first question why do you really want to have the certification okay Uh, is it because your company wants you to have or do you want to upscale your knowledge okay 
for me company did not sponsor i did it on my own okay so uh, and as far as the time is concerned like i would say everybody is having same amount of time we we have like weekdays it's not so easy to uh, get time and study except uh, during late late evening or something but i would say uh, i spent around 6 months for studying this says so even even isaka recommends 6 months okay and uh, daily i would say i would spend 1 hour or something early in the morning and uh, my weekends used to be uh, fully occupied like i mean fully occupied for sisa like i used to dedicate my weekend saturday sundays for studying uh, sisa and uh, this is how i approach like it's not like as you ask the question if you read some uh, concepts and if you read some books and go and write no that's not going to happen so uh, two things uh, the isaka recommends one is that sisa review manual the uh, crm that is mandatory you should go through it at least once or twice and another most important point is they have this beautiful qa question and answers okay so i i did not attempt those question and answers initially because uh, see be it exam or be it anything uh, what you need to do is you need to be first confident with what you are doing okay then go and do something right then 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 attempt what uh, like uh, then attempt your uh, exam or your mock exam or anything just by going and attempting your mock exam and if you get le- less marks you will be demotivated so I, i didn't have that approach so i read the crm uh, once or twice i mean let us say the first domain or the second domain then i went ahead and started looking at the qa at that time i understood the gaps like uh, Yeah, where I am and where I am not, and and uh, just to uh, let you know, the the QA is not for you to practice. The QA is for you to understand the question answers and the justification. That that's, that's the reason. Point. Yeah, yeah. I I found it because I found it. Uh, okay, the reason how I deduced to this point is because if Isaka wanted you to study the question and answers and not study. uh like or, or or i would say let me rephrase if isaka wanted you to uh, use this qae as a uh, as a test test material then they wouldn't have given the answers right at the bottom of each and every question okay this includes the justification they would have given it in the last page right that's how they do so they, they don't want you to see the answers right but that's that so that's the point so people what they try to do is they they try to give the uh, qae and they somehow like <laughs> their eyes eyes roll down and see the answers and they pick the answers no that that's not the intent the qa is to study is to study the questions study the answers okay study the options and again reevaluate like what you would have thought and uh, what is what is wrong uh, with your approach if you have selected the wrong answer so i would say each uh, like if i if i'm not wrong each and every domain contains at least 150 questions right so if you go through all these 150 questions several times you you will be confident about what the subject is right so uh, qae i will not recommend it initially first you need to go through the videos and third when i enroll your course so i think that was I, i would say i was 100% confident that yeah i mean i got what i need because uh, in your course i i saw lots of uh, lots of sample question and answers okay sample qaes okay in the end and there were some uh, in uh, some mock tests i believe some mock tests that really helped me and more than that the uh, explanation what you gave for each and every concepts uh, th- those were very lengthy okay so so uh, how i split my time was like first i focused on the the lecture or the class which sir was taking then the revision was done subsequently by following the udemy course and by the time i took your course in the end and i was sure with the concepts okay okay so uh, i think I, i think you have answered almost all the questions so any last tips or tricks you know which you which, which you would like to share with all the future sisa aspirants who are currently you know will be giving the exams very soon yeah so uh, advice to those who are giving the exams soon i would say um, please practice don't don't study any new concept in the end please practice all the qaes 
official QAs, and those who are uh, future CSA aspirants who are uh, going to begin. So I would say take your time, like don't hurry, don't think that you can uh, finish this within one month or two months. No, that's that's not uh, that's not possible. Take your time, like you, you can enroll uh, ISAFA's official CSA course or attend the class any under anybody or. You can take any any of the course that's your wish, it's your choice. But make sure that you spend good quality of time uh, to understand what the concepts are, to understand uh, how the QA is framed. And there are like uh, in in Isaka like that. It's not like a straightforward question. They they ask like uh, what is the first or what is the first step or what is the most important. Okay, so those those keywords you need to read. So it's okay if you read the question twice because I. Uh, but because of the exam, yeah, I mean, it's it's not a, uh, what do you call it? your, uh, you can go back in the exam, you can go back and correct your answers. I did not do that, honestly, because uh, I, I knew that this, this was not an adaptive test, but still I was preparing myself for an adaptive test. Like I went and wrote in such a way that I'm writing an adaptive test. I didn't want to go back because uh, what I heard was when people try to write the exam and when they go and revise back and change the answers, some people they, they fail, so don't do that. Okay, so um, uh, I think your first first gut instincts, like what you see, based on what you have remembered, right? Those answers will be true. Trust me. But for that to reach at that position, you need to practice a lot, especially the QA, &E. the question, the official QA, and in uh, in Aditya Sisa's this much course, I think we have lots of, I mean, lots and lots of uh, question and answers, and I mean. Uh, pocket test where the lots of pocket test and mock test were there. So that that really helped. Okay. So thank you so much for joining us and for sharing your experience with all the students.